Truthful Christian. At first, I thought your videos were satirical, and they're quite laughable nevertheless. Uh, but since I saw your first video, you've started censoring the comments. Uh, this leads me to believe that you are indeed serious about what you are saying. However, if I'm wrong by assuming that your videos are a serious representation of your opinion, I kindly request a private message letting me know. This is the evolutionary model. Okay, so this is how evolution happens. First off, we have a single-celled organism, and over millions of years, this organism somehow evolved into a monkey. And then this monkey evolved over millions of years by natural selection and evolves into a human. And it stops right there. You obviously have no knowledge of the theory of evolution. Uh, we did not come from monkeys. This is a common misconception and it is often spread by creationists. Uh, we share a common ancestor with monkeys though and we are in fact primates ourselves. All this means is that we are more like cousins of monkeys than anything else. So the definition of evolution means to get bigger or stronger over a long period of time. Uh, not really. Getting bigger and stronger is often a byproduct of evolution, but it is by no means a definition. So the definition of evolution means to get bigger or stronger over a long period of time. But I want you to think about this. Do you really believe in evolution? Do you really believe that living organisms evolve? It sounds like a ridiculous theory to me. The definition of gravity is the natural force of attraction between any two massive bodies, which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. But I want you to think about this. Do you really believe in gravity? It sounds like a ridiculous theory to me. This is what a pine cone looked like a few million years ago, and it still looks exactly the same today proving that evolution isn't happening and there's no such thing as evolution. Another good example would be the dragonfly. The dragonfly looks the same today as it did millions of years ago. So these examples prove that evolution isn't happening. Uh, evolution is just a myth made up by scientists. Alright, in all seriousness, these examples are ridiculous because the changes that take place may not be visible right away to the naked eye. They could be changes in DNA or any number of things. Or it just could be that the population was uh, so naturally fit that there was no need to change to survive. People nowadays uh, can't think for themselves. They have to rely on scientists. So they're getting second-hand information. They're getting false information. Alright, nobody completely thinks for themselves. We gain our knowledge from many people in our lives as well as experiences. But I for one would rather trust the modern-day scientists who pay large sums of money to gain the knowledge that they have over a Bronze Age book written by men who had little to no understanding of the universe, let alone the world we live in. You, can, you can't hide from God. He sees everything. And it is the worst type of tyranny imaginable. As Christopher Hitchens always says, we should be glad that there isn't the slightest bit of evidence for the existence of any deity. It is the most terrible type of tyranny imaginable, and you cannot even die to escape it. You are not offered that route with religion. So you can take a look at the laws of genetics and what you'll see is that things produce after their species. So dogs produce dogs, cats produce cats, elephants produce elephants. Uh, there's no evolution going on, there's no such thing as evolution because if there was then we would see variation between species. I find your lack of knowledge on this subject really quite hilarious. Things produce after their species so elephants produce elephants? Here's a quick lesson in taxonomy. Here are two different species of elephants, the African forest elephant and the African bush elephant. Both are different species, but they are still elephants. Uh, we can move even farther up the taxonomic hierarchy if you want. Here are two elephants which each belong in their own separate genus. This is the same African forest elephant from earlier and now an Asian elephant. These elephants are not even from the same genus, but they are still elephants, and dare I say, they still produce after their own kind. 
Many evolutionists say that the Earth is about 13 billion years old, but yet the Earth is only about 6,000 years old according to the Bible. Christians show them so much evidence and proof, but yet they still reject God. Do you really have proof of this? If you did and you presented it to the right people, the history books would be rewritten and you would surely be deserving of a Nobel Prize for your discovery. And, and then they say that evolution needs time. What they really mean is that, okay, we can't see evolution happening, so we'll just make up an excuse. Yep, I'm sure that's what they mean. And this is, in my opinion, this is very stupid on so many levels, because we've waited a thousand years, over a thousand years, and we haven't seen any living organisms evolve. So how can you say that evolution is happening when it's not observable? For, for it to be science, you have to be able to observe, measure, and test it. That's called the scientific method. First of all, evolution takes more than a thousand years. But ignoring that, evolution actually has been observed. We've seen changes in populations from environmental pressure, and we've seen new species emerge from them. I don't have time to go into all the details here, but CDK007 has excellent videos on the topic, and I recommend them highly to you. Let's talk a bit about the process of elimination and how it demolishes evolution theory. So, what is the process of elimination? The process of elimination is a basic logical tool to solve real-world problems by subsequently removing options that may be deemed impossible or illogical. The remaining pool of possibilities grows smaller. I think that's the first accurate statement you've made so far. Here is an example of using the process of elimination. Let's say that a pen falls off a very high building. What happens to the pen? Number one, the pen disappears. Number two, the pen flies back up. Or number three, the pen breaks. So obviously, as you can see, number one and two are illogical and incorrect. This leaves us with number three. Number three is the, is the correct answer according to the process of elimination. All right, this is ridiculous logic. First of all, you did not account for everything that could have happened to the pen. There are literally billions of possibilities that you did not account for. The most obvious being, what if you dropped the pen and it didn't break? Okay, so let's apply the process of elimination on evolution and see what comes up. 1. Evolution is true and we are constantly evolving rapidly. 2. Evolution takes a long time. 3. God created man in his own image and there's no such thing as evolution. Well, we all know that one is wrong because we haven't seen any living organisms evolve, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, no. We all know that one is wrong because two is true. Evolution takes a long time. And we know that two is wrong because we've waited thousands of years and we haven't seen any sign of evolution. So by default, three is correct. Alright, using your own logic, I can prove that God does not exist. Here are three possibilities. One cows are purple. Two, people usually wear pants on their head. Three, evolution happens and God does not exist. Well, we all know that one is wrong simply because cows aren't purple. And we know that two is wrong because pants are made to be worn as a covering for the legs, not as a hat. So, by default, three is correct. Evolution happens and God does not exist.